Good morning. Of course, you're on the Open Gate Show, and I have here a veteran, a jockey, O'Neill Mullins. O'Neill has been riding quite a number of years, has gone through a lot. His faith is very strong, and he's a testimony to those who uh, believe in all positiveness. And we are here this morning with one such man, a jockey, a good person, a veteran, a horseman, jockey O'Neill Mullins. Yeah, good morning, Royal. It's a pleasant morning, this morning to happen, just we can have a conversation. You know, the blessing and the spirit of the Lord be with you all the time. You know, keep up the good work. Yes, Mr. Blake, as we were saying now. I mean, you started as an apprentice uh, at the barn at Richard and Zan. I've not gotten much rides. In the early years, you did well with him. And as how things happen all the while, you know, you move on and still continue to do well. Tell us about how you came into to horse racing, why you choose horse racing. The ride of the jockey, that is. Well, naturally, Mr. Blake, I was grew up in the country, you know, St. Elizabeth, and I used to ride in donkeys and all those things, you know. So, you know, I come a town, you know, come to Kingston, and I was in the Waterhouse, where I originate from, Balcom Jive, and um, I used to listen to horse racing, and I used to watch, you know, Winston Griffiths, and I used to watch, you know, Andrew Ramjit and John Valesquez and Corey Nakatani and all those jackets. You know, tell uh, Uncle Johnson, so one day, you know, he got to carry me to the track, and he came me to the track, him and Pawnee Lindon, because those two jackets was the real jacket that, you know, bring me up in racing. And from there, you know, I started to go to stable to stable till finally I get through with Richard Azan, and, you know, from there my career started. Get whatever you want. Okay, you came that route, and um, immediately, you know, you were looked upon as a jockey with promise. And uh, you came, there was an apprentice brother that. Did all, also did well. His name was uh, at, at the Azen Barn. What is his name again? Oh, his name is um, Howard Newell. Howard Newell, yes. Okay. Uh, Anil, give us your, give us a brief history on your apprenticeship. I mean, when you started to ride in horse racing, in horse, in, 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 in racing officially. Well, Starting out, you know, in riding official race as a as a apprentice jockey. Some people call it bug boy. You know, I started out good, you know, because the first race that I really win on is um, Papa Razia, ten year old for Steve Badu. You know, that was my first ride, you know, and and that was my first coming out as an apprentice rider too. You know, me and um, Paul Francis, you know, we are the two first jockey who road to win at the first time coming out. And coming out doing good, Mr. Richard here, he gave me a lot of winning winners and I win a couple of races well and I get broke up, you know. First time I, uh, I jump off um I want us two furlong. Um I think there's a us where um Mr Darby used to train. Well when I jump off you know I, I broke my foot uh, my foot fly and I lied on it and it was in my neck back right here, you know, my toe them. And, you know, I come back at a six month time and I'm beginning to win a couple of triple and fuple and so forth. And, you know, I drop off again and from there, you know, I get injured, you know, take me back another, another six months. And it's like every September I used to drop off, you know. Well, since we are speaking about falling off horses, uh, you know, I always remind listeners that. A jockey's career is very unique. On horseback, it's it's the high risk. 
Otherwise, their diet is something that they have to keep because, of course, you know, uh, a jockey weight has to be very light. You've started falling off horses from you were an apprentice. I can't count the amount of times up to this date that, you've, that you fell. What, which of those was the, the one that hurted you most? Because I, I don't want to say which one was the worst because you're, you're so ultra positive. But which one or two, or which experience then, put it better, what, what you, can, you want to talk about? Well, you see, my experience now is, is training. And you know, you know, falling off a horse, you know, I used to wonder, but now it's like it don't bother me no more. And you know, broken up, where well, I don't really want to help to get any more again, you know, but it don't really even bother me no more neither. And my worst experience is broken up, don't spread your ill. But I hardly broke up. Not on a horse, in a car? Yeah, in a car. You understand know, where I actually lose my two foot, them, you know? My two knee, them end up in them two hip. Where it cost me, you know, two hip replacement and two knee replacement. And, you know, my, 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 my foot, uh, my foot from my hip to my knee is just iron, you know? And, you know, I do good anyway, and it, it don't really affect my mind because, you know, I'm a strong person, I'm a positive person. I've liked Job. You know, they can't hurt the body, but they really can't hurt the spirit, you know? <laughs> So, you know, uh, I have that mind and a good, you know? I'm like Jonah in the whale belly, you know? Call out for my Lord and he's spitting out on jail and so. You know, to me, you know, it's just like a day, you know, my side is like 10 years and years. And it's like 10 years, your side is like a day passed through by mine. So, you know, I just keep it like that and I give thanks for what I have now and how I be now and you know, better the head of me anyway. And that's my part for now. A man of strong faith, I've heard a lot of times, uh, for example, if I'm at the racetrack and <clears throat> there's a spill and you're in the race, majority around me are saying, oh, it must be Mullins, Mullins must, must, Mullins must mean that. At times you're not, at times you are. And they even say, well, he will never ride again. And you always bounce back. And, you know, I remember doing an interview with you on the Open Gate show while you were in the, in, in the hospital. And, you know, the, you know, a lot of comments came how they didn't know that how strong you were mentally and spiritually. And, you know, that was a, a great testimony in, in that, 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 uh, that show I did having you interviewed. Where... When can we expect you to be back in the saddle? I know that might be a far-fetched question, but uh, in, in a month or two or, or what? Uh, Mr. Blair, Mr. Blair, you see, um, I will be back early, you know, because, you know, I'm riding with the sun. You know what I mean? And, you know, each time the sun rises, I rise. I will give myself back about, um, about another five weeks from today. Because um, I ride the other day, you know, my shoulder broke the other day, you know, about, about in um, October the 3rd. And this got to be like my sixth broke up. Yeah. You know, um, one in car accident, five off a racers. And, you know, um, each time I broke up, I'll be stronger. Because you can see, you know, I'm real robot, you know, real <laughs> bionic, as they can say, you know cyborg but when i come back believe it i will be there i will be stronger you know i will more race and all my fans will be happy just like we're happy about you know and i just ask you know to you know, give me the prayer and you know, i don't need to sorry you know for me you know. just give me a little prayer you know what i mean and i will be good you know just reach out for me and let the Lord bless me, such as you, and give thanks. Philip Fiani, I've known from a youth age, from my teenage age, years, and uh, he's one such a unique person. Very principled, has his mindset 
in such a way, no wonder he's where he's at now. My mentor, I should say, a man, <clears throat> pardon me, a man who I respect to the highest. And uh, if I had listened to him, even 30% of the time, maybe I would be much better off now. I'm saying this because uh, he is as such that the racing fraternity has all the highest respect for him. O'Neill, you've ridden most of your winners in the last mm, three or four years for Filipiani. How is that uh, relationship? I mean, say something about the great man. Well, um, I have to give thanks and praises to, you know, Mr. Philip. You know, Mr. Fianney, the maestro, as you know, the world would say. And, you know, him being a great person to me, he's a great um, man to me, he's a great, um, inspire me a lot, you know. Mentor, he's been a great mentor to me, you know. We can sit down, we can talk, and we can discuss about anything. And, um, you know, he tried to let me be happy, you know, he tried to put me on the rides, you know, he tried to make sure, you know, I have a, a winners, you know, to maintain myself, to, you know, to pay my bills, you know what I mean? And I have to give my heart out to him. And you see, he inspires a lot of people. And he is not a man to afraid if you work to give the right. And I give him my hundred and ten percent in everything I do. And I show he do the same. And he is a godfather and a father to me, and I can't deny that, you know. And I just ask him the Lord to bless him and keep him up, and that's him can win more races, you know. And me can win more races and him have more hours, you know, and take the training back seriously as what he used to do. And you know, for me do that, you know, O'Neill Mullins will be good, you know. O'Neill Mullins will never have nothing to worry about, you know, because you say. The good book said, you know, every step of a good man is ordered by the Lord. It is lighted, it is his way. You know, so my step, his step, everybody's step is ordered by the Lord. But it's just sometimes you step and make a slide. You know, broke an ankle, broke a foot, you know. You just have to just get up back, you know, and make back a good step. And everything will be all right. Take it from me, you know. I've been sure that I can tell you, you know. Lord bless you. Yeah, before we go, yeah, is there anything you can pass on onto these young apprentices and young jockeys that are riding at Camus Park presently? You know, they have their way. The modern way is so different. It's scary. You know, one wonders what a lot of people focus on. You know, you know. Well, for me, you know, I'm really scared of what the future holds for, you know, how jockeys behave and, 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 you know, kids all over. But for these young guys, I'm sure a man like you, is there anything that you could, you would, you'd like to say that could maybe could help them? Because, you know. Yeah, you see, the world is nothing up to the world, you know. It's just the people that are in the world. You know, you see, you have a man just like a racing is like an art, you know. You know, you started to start carving, and you know, you don't do it properly until you continue, continue until you, you become a professional. You see, sometimes we have, we, we human, we human, we do some things. But we don't do it from our heart. And you see, to be a professional and to be to be a, a, a patronor, you know, you got to do something from your mind and from your heart. Because you see, these jockeys, some of them, them are jockeys even before them started to ride. <laughs> and you know, when them become getting them license, you can't even talk to them. You know, because. They feel like so well, you know. They they are a bigger jacket, and more and the the older jacket them that trying to say well X Y Z, 
you know, or do this or do that, or your rain supposed to be like that, or you know, your lens supposed to be like that, you know. So it's harder for us to have a conversation with the, the, the younger elders, them, you know, because as what the Bible tells you, you know, the good book, you know, they said the third and the fourth generation of them are vipers. Hmm? So if there are vipers, there's like, you know, matrix, you know, we are like the old scale. So, you know, they, they, they move fast, you know, meanwhile we have to move slow. So they, they learn more and more and how they're supposed to learn. But at the end of the day, they don't take no talk from the elder Jackie, and, you know. And well, well, you know, with Cayman Park, what the problem with really with Cayman Park, you know, you have a lot of trainers, you have less hires, so you have a lot of jackets. And Cayman Park is like a quicksand, you know. When you keep on going down, there's nobody to help you till you get distracted. Yeah. You got me? No disrespect, you, know? you understand? But it's just the way I feel, I just talk the way I feel. You know? You see, you got to have somebody, you know, in everywhere, in every circumstances, in, in every company, you know, that I got your back. You know? That's somebody you can reach out to. You know, a godfather, father, uncle, somebody. You know? You got me? And I wish these jackies coming up all the best, you know? But, you know, we have to cooperate. The thing is, we don't have no cooperation. And you see, we don't have no cooperation, it's like we have less love. You know, we don't have no love. You know what I mean? And everybody been gravitated to one thing, you know? Everybody into gravitate and say, oh, you know, we can't, we can't allow you to take this space because, you know, you're going to win. Or, you know, even when your house is not going away, you try to stop somebody or you try to take another purpose, person food and you see through all those things and you know, I try to lick out another man out of the race too. You know, you know I'm going to win and all those things because through his one chuck, you know, in America and all those places, those things don't happen. In America and all those places, you see all, look up in England where you see all 30 other a race in a one race. You know, you don't even see a jockey job. In, in Jamaica, you see six hours a race in a one race, seven hours a race in a one race and two jockey a job. <laughs> you know? <laughs> so, you know, just look at it, you know. Huh. These things show you that, you know, there's no love, there's no cooperation, there's no peace, there's no unity. And from there's no unity, it cannot be a strength. You understand? So everybody does, does climatize to for them thing and does to for them thing. And that's what it's going to be until, you know, whosoever stays stake are the strongest of the strongest. The race is not for the swift. Who can endure to the end. Well, it goes outside of horse, of horse racing. I mean, if you look I at the kids nowadays, well, I'm talking Jamaica, and I'm yeah. sure in, in other parts of the world, it simulates what you're saying. And, you know, it's a good point, and it's something that I, I, I consider a lot. And even my kids, I try to, to guide them and for them to look and see other kids, the negative way that they're going, and hope that they will, they will gravitate away. O'Neill, before, well, I'm sure your fans would like to know the top two horses or three that in your opinion you have ridden and the more the, the race that gives you the most thrill of winning well, you know I win I win um, Buzz Nightmare that horse was a very good ass. you know I enjoy and ride that horse and I enjoy riding my the ass name um my super girl, you know. Those ass, you know, when I ride those ass, it gave me a feeling, a very good feeling, you know. But now since they are gone, you know, I got to try to get back myself <laughs> used to some different, you know, feelings of ours. But, you know, coming up, you know, my train have a lot of horses, you know, where some nice horses, you know, hopefully they sound and, you know, keep themselves right where, you know, I can win back. Some more race and get myself in, but you know my best race is Buzz Nightmare, my super girl, you know, and the murdered one who named Crypto Current. O'Neill, on that note, you know we you know we are very grateful to have you on the Open Gate Show, and you're one of the few jockeys that are readily uh, available to let your fans know what is going on. It's, it's good for racing because fans. You know, are there, and each jockey have have their fans, and you know, the Open Gate Show 
will be going on a, a campaign to have our top jockeys, uh, well, all jockeys, uh, on air so that their fans can know what is happening presently. Thank you very much, Anil, and quick, I hope you return quickly and victorious. My fans are telling you this. At night, I go to my bed and I go on my knees and I pray for them. I pray for the Lord to protect them. My grooms, my trainers, I do such the same thing. My owners, I do such the same things, And I want them to do the same thing for me. Because, you know, there's nothing more in the light. And you see, to see the light, not like the, the starlight or the bright light, you know, we're talking about the real light. You understand? We have to all give thanks. And we love one all, and may the good Lord bless and keep and the spirit of the Lord invest in them. Whosoever on the heart not clean, I'm going to clean it up because this judgment soon come. Bless you. BLC Jamaica for all your services in alarms, CCTV, and gate automation. Call us today at 1 866 351 1105 or 876 320 7711. Check us out for all your security services. Again, call us at 1 866 351 1105 or 876 